I tell people that he was looking for a young man for Tipperary. So, <laughs> so <laughs> any, anyhow, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm the uh, Rural Recreation Officer for Tipperary. Basically, our job is to promote and develop walking, as, first of all, as a local amenity. And, you know, it's now, it's now been well proven now by the experts, as well as walking being uh, good for you physically, it's also very good for you mentally. In fact, uh, John Tracy, who won a, 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 an Olympic medal back some years ago, he, he is now chief executive of the National Sports Council. And I heard him saying at a conference recently that for every euro that the government spends on walking, they save three on health. Mm -hmm. But, uh, but as I say, our job, good part of our job would be to negotiate with farmers and convince farmers to let walks be put in place. Because you see, without the cooperation of the landowners, well, we'd have no walks. Mm -hmm. Also, the cooperation of uh, Quilpe. Uh, we went through a fair bit of Quilpe territory today. So uh, the farmers get money, not for access. Farmers were, and I was involved in farming politics in another life myself, I was national chairman of IFA's Rural Development Committee. So but, but the farmers, uh, the farming organisations were saying, well, there must be some benefit in this for the farmers. And a, the scheme then was devised called the Walks Scheme. And the farmers get some remuneration for, not for access, but for keeping the walks in order, cutting the few briars, bushes, all that kind of thing. And as well as, well as that, uh, inspecting to see that the walks, the style, style isn't knocked or whatever. Now, if something like that happens, they contact somebody like myself. But there's a fair bit of work in putting a walk in place. And, you know, I'm very fortunate with the kind of people I work with. Uh, we're here now in St. Common. Great community here. Great community support. You couldn't do it without that, uh, you know, as well. as that. Tremendous community support. But then I, I have to deal with Quilp, and again, I, I have a good relationship with Quilp. It's Carl Byron, and the National Trains Office, and indeed, uh, also the Department of Security. We are very fortunate uh, to put that loop in place, cost in the region of 50,000, somewhere between 50 and 60,000. That's the, so it was uh, um, funded by uh, funded by the, the uh, by uh, by Port Falcha or, or the, whatever term they have now, uh, Fault Ireland, and also by leader. And I don't want to set up a mutual congratulation society, <laughs> but we're very fortunate here in North Tipperary. Indeed, we have an excellent person in South Tip too, but we're in North Tip today in having someone like Sean Cowley. Mm -hmm. I've I have, Sean has been a tower of strength. He has really been helpful. Now, he said, I Super come at a drop of a hat. He has really been helpful, and we're fortunate in the county in having him. And I'm delighted today that I met the real boss for the first time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> in, anything that I want done now, I know, Sandra, yeah. that I can you. So, more or less, look at, I, don't, I was telling a story earlier on to some of you up the front about two grandsons, and at the risk of boring you, I'll repeat it again, two grandsons I had visiting recently. An eight-year-old from next door, and he's always running in and out, you can imagine. And a three-year-old from Dublin. I was telling a story to the three-year-old about the uh, Charlie Calf, and setting out to seek his fortune, and meeting a giant, and he calf kicked the giant, and so on, and he paid me great attention. I said, this lad, you know, is going to be intelligent, I can ask him his grandfather. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> The lad from next door was there listening away, and when I was finished, he turned to the little Dublin lad and he said, Daniel, he said, you're now, you're three now, and I wonder the hell what was coming next. In one more year, he said, you'll stop listening to granddad. <laughs> <laughs> because he said, when I was four, I got awfully bored with all his old stories. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't, so I don't want to bore you any further. Apart from saying, again, you're very, very welcome here. Uh, we really genuinely pride ourselves on our hospitality. And, and, you know, pe making people welcome and so on. And if any of you want to come at any time, uh, just let us know, and we will certainly, if I can't guide a walk in any part of the county, we'll get someone else to do so. Uh, like, this area, I, I have more hope for this area now than what I had back some years ago, despite all the doom and gloom. I think that, you know, houses have been built, 
we are now looking at schemes outside of farming, and farming will no longer sustain areas like this. So, how are you going? How are you? Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to be listening to me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, as I say, I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic about, I'm optimistic, and I have great belief in what can be done. I'll finish up with a quote, cabinet. He said, I returned again to Ireland. To Ireland, green and chaste and foolish. I walked again to the hill areas. I talked to the hill people. I looked into the heart of this life and saw that it was good. Thanks for the Thank you. Thank you.